Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Kristen Charmas, an editorial and portrait photographer based in Boston. Now she's got a just an amazing new project called Out of Many One. We're going to find out a little bit more about that, but before we get into that, welcome to the show. Hi, it's I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> this is really cool because you know you and I uh, met at Inspire uh, just this last year, really, and we connected about the industry. We connected about what's going on in the photography world, you know, and you're really active and you've had a fairly long, uh, I guess, run in the business and this in the in this industry. So you've seen a lot of things happening here. What is what is the one thing that you you believe has changed since you started photography for the for for the benefit of other photographers who are listening in? Yeah. What has changed dramatically for you? Um, for me as a working photographer, as a working photographer and as an editorial photographer. So, well, I will say that I tell people when people say, you know, oh, what do you shoot? You know, I always say faces and food mm -hmm. and that. My and I also and then I preface that with my bartending money is weddings. That's how I make my living, so that I can shoot the things I love to shoot because the industry's changed so much and nobody wants to pay. And I still need to feed that creative need to do the other things like music, like food, like fine art, my personal work. I've been photographing families with off years. Oops, you cut, you cut off a little bit. And um, can you hear me? Because I think, there we go. Yeah, we got frozen. See, you spoke too soon. <laughs> um, bye, honey. Um, so we, um, I've been photographing children affected with autism for years on a sliding scale and doing, and so doing weddings. And now I've started to do mitzvahs in a way that hasn't been done, um, which has also really taken off where I make it a lot about the child. Um, less about the family and that's helped because nobody really wanted to do them and I think the biggest challenge and what's changed the most is the oversaturation and overpopulation of photographers um, in the industry and the dumbing down of pricing and so it's very hard to make a living yes absolutely I, and, and and that is that is the biggest challenge now is that you have to almost diversify right I'd say that, and I'd also say that, especially in the wedding industry, personally for me, aging out of that is a big deal. I'm 48, and it's very hard to compete with the young hipster. You know, I don't have my septum piercing, so, like, I'm not, you know, my ink's not showing. Like, I am a little bit older, and that's why the mitzvah things also kind of work for me a little bit, sure. because I'm a parent, and the parents are my age, and so... I stopped photographing families for quite a long time and only my reoccurring families that would continuously come to me because they understood the way I captured children and I thought I could parlay that into mitzvah work. So I was doing a little of that. So I felt like there is a big part of aging out and being female in the wedding industry and photography in general that's very challenging um, and not to get into that whole thing, but I wanted something, I want to just continue to make pictures and be able to get paid and help support my family along with my husband who's completely 100% behind me. Awesome. So, yeah. So that's the biggest challenge is the oversaturation of I'm a photographer too culture that I want to just throw my computer across the room. But you found yourself a ways or you found ways to differentiate yourself and still stand out. I mean, that's, that's what got, caught my attention about this new project called yeah. Out of Many One. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't just sort of, you haven't just sort of said yes. There's a, there's a great many photographers now in the world, uh, so I get, I'm just going to hang it up. I mean, you found ways of just stepping out and saying, I'm going to do something that is going to get noticed, and you certainly, definitely got noticed because of that. Um, oh my god! <laughs> right? I mean, mm -hmm. things have taken off. Um, but let, let, let's before we get into sure. the project itself, let's rewind and go back uh, a few years, perhaps. Tell us a little bit how you got started in this business, crazy business of uh, photography. Um, well, I always took pictures. I always had point and shoot cameras. Um, you know, I never say on my about page like, "Oh, I picked up my first camera and rainbows and unicorns shot out of it." And like, <laughs> you know, I can't. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, obviously that was happening, or I wouldn't be doing photography. So. Um, 
I have always loved it and I traveled through Europe in my early 20s mostly alone and I always had a point and shoot and I realized that I really could compose a shot even with a point and shoot and I was a dancer for 20 years and I always say not on a pole and um, I learned a lot about light and composition and space from being on the stage. I danced at Jacob's Pillow for two years in the Berkshires. I danced in companies in Philadelphia. I went to performing arts high school so I was always involved in light and shape and the combination of music and, and composition. So I, my mother's friend gave her a camera to give to me when I went to Emerson at 26. I gradu- I didn't go to college for my undergrad until I was 26. I was like big in the club scene and the, ED- the electronic dance music scene when it was still called techno. And I was just living and I took not a gap year, but like a gap almost decade. And when I went to Emerson um, at 26, I took a photography class in my senior year and started shooting around the North End and I pitched a story to the Phoenix and I got it and I was shooting food and fast forward I moved to LA and I was a TV producer and when your shows go dark when you're on hiatus you know I could rent packages that were worth twenty thousand dollars at places like Sammy's and teach myself and I taught my friend who was a actor on a kids show taught me how to print color he loved photography self-taught I used my old music connections, shot CD covers for a record label, and the record label called Ohm. And I just kept photographing. There's four million beautiful people that want their picture taken there. So I just <laughs> kept true. shooting. Yeah. And then I had my son. I continued to produce TV. And then we had our first son, who is on the spectrum. And um, I left my career to stay home and raise him and my husband as a chef. And I started just shooting families a little bit here and there and didn't really know much about running a business or anything like that. And then we moved to L- we moved back to the Boston area and um, it was just time to go. Like I loved LA and then when I left the business it was and having a family, it was very lonely and I was like, oh my God, we said we'd be here five years. It's been eight and I own a house and I drive a Benz and I care that I'm wearing Juicy and uh, who am I? I have to go, we have to go back. That's fascinating. So, I, well, what, when I hear your story though, uh, especially, you know, how you've sort of, you, know, you were a TV producer and then you found resources around you that would still fuel your passion for photography. Right. Yeah, I, it just tells me how resourceful you are. You know, you just find you find ways to just sort of move on and find things that will continue to fuel you. Uh, and that's amazing. I mean, that in, this, in itself is very inspiring. Um, so let's jump into okay, your, your project. No, no. Let's jump into your project. Your project is... Uh, is something that that is important, especially given the current state of the United States. Timing is everything. Uh, timing is everything, absolutely. So let's talk about "Out of Many One," which right. which is the English translation of the Latin phrase "E pluribus unum,", unum yes. which is on pretty much every everything. everything in America, right? Free marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about. This project, what did what did it what did okay. it mean to you? Okay, so literally, it's been launched for maybe. So when was the second? What's the date today? So on the second, in my little second of July, na- let's say. Yep, in yep. my little neighborhood, we have a block party the Saturday before every Fourth of July. And growing up in Philly, I love a block party. So I was really excited when we moved to this little neighborhood um, just outside of Boston. They had block parties. And I had just purchased um, a light. I was photographing Brian Friedman's wedding in Puerto Rico, which was heaven on earth. And the makeup artist had a really great ring light. And um, Brian and I both were like, ooh, we have to own that light. And... um, We have to own that light. We have to own that light. So we both bought it on the spot in Puerto Rico on our phones, and he tested it. And then I said, I'm going to test it at my block party with all the kids. So I guess it was around 930 at night, and I set up the light in my neighbor's garage, and I had them just kind of be who they were. They were a mess. It was so hot. It was so sweaty. It was literally just one light, a stool, my camera, and... I just said, don't smile. Like, I just wanted to do a study of their faces. They were covered in barbecue sauce and face paint. And oh, they, wow. were wear- they were wearing, they stunk. And they had been playing with water balloons. And they were really, which is the kind of children's portraiture I always wanted to do. But so many families 
wanted it a certain way. And I just had, that's why I was like, I'm going to just do this. And I loved them. I ran in my house and at around one in the morning when I had finished editing them, I put them on Facebook and I put them on Instagram. And when I woke up, I woke up to hundreds of likes on Instagram Fantastic. and dozens of texts. How can, will you photograph my child this way? Can you photograph my child this way? And as I was shooting it, I looked at them all and I thought, how, there is no 100% pure American. What, what is that? Mm -hmm. These children are so diverse that even if you look at them one way, you don't know what their genetic makeup is, what their heritage is, what their ethnic background is. And this, this is kind of digressing, but not really. And I've always remembered when I was traveling through, London, in, through Europe, I stayed with a friend of mine in England. His name is Digo. And we were hanging out. I was, very, I was young. I was like 22 or 23 and dumb. And we were talking about what it's like to live in America versus England. And I was like, so what are you? And he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, well, like, where are you from? And he looked at me and he goes, I'm English. And I said, but you're black. And he goes, I'm still English. And he goes, that's the problem with you Americans. You're so obsessed with what you are. He's like, when you're traveling around Europe, do you sit there and somebody says, you know, where are you from? And you go, oh, I'm Russian and I'm Italian and I'm Jewish and I'm this. And I'm, you go, I'm American. He's like, if I was in America and somebody asked me what I was, I would say, well, I'm English because I'm English. I was born here. He's like, I'm Jamaican. That's where my family's from, sure, sure. but that's not who I am. I identify as British. I identify as English. And I never forgot that. And when I was shooting that, that all started coming into my, into my mind. And then the next day I was talking to a friend of mine at a pool and he's an art director. And uh, I told him what I was doing. And I was like, you know, where could I go with this? Like I could do some kind of project. And he's like, did you see the John Cena thing that just came out? for the ad council and I said no and he played it for me at the pool and I went oh my god oh my god that's it this is what I need to do I need to speak politically without saying a word I need to Ugh, that's my phone sorry um let me just turn it off hold that thought be quiet so um sorry so um I was like oh I'm gonna call it e pluribus unum and I'm gonna I'm going to take pictures of children's faces and it just it hit me I was like I'm gonna just their first name put a name to the face even if somebody sorry about the phone um even if somebody wants to not use their child's real name which I've had a couple families do yep. um it, there just needs to be a name to a face it makes it more relatable and just what their family thinks their genetic makeup is what their heritage is because if you look at some of those children there's a child that I shot from the block party, and when I asked her mom, I was like, so what else is Hana? I see she's, I see she's Chinese, right? And she goes, yeah, but she's also Cuban, and she's also Irish, and she's also this. But when you look at her and she walks down the street, she looks like just an Asian child. And I felt like these children, I think the timing was perfect, and I felt like maybe not saying anything is saying everything. And I dare anybody to tell these children that they're not American because they all feel American. I asked them. And so I said, all right, I'm going to do a Facebook page. And in three days, I got 500 likes. And people asked me, are you coming to North Carolina? Are you coming to Atlanta? Are you coming here? And I'm like, I don't even have any money. <laughs> like, whoa. And another thing that I need to reiterate is that I just did one session, real official session, in my small town. And so not everybody that I want to represent has been represented because I live in a tiny town and I'm doing it in a garage and give me a minute to like, for all the haters that are like, yo, well, you know, like, where are these people or where are that, these people? First of all, you don't know what you're looking at and what these children really are. And I've had lots of people say, how can I help with this project? So when I did the shoot the other day, every parent was like, my children understand what you're doing. They get it. They understand that they're everything and that it's important. And the parents have all said, like, finally, somebody that's saying something without saying anything. 
And so it's taking off. And so now what's going to happen next? I'm not sure. I have some ideas on where it could go. Um, but instead of obsessing about like, I'm doing this project so I can see how I can get on Oprah or how I can get on, well, I'm older. So now I think, how can I get on fresh air? <laughs> um, you know, or <laughs> Bill Ma you know, politically incorrect. I, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about taking portraits, making good art, striking a chord, speaking out for everybody without saying anything. Wow. Awesome. Um, I think that just sort of summarizes the entire project right there. I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's supposed to be fun. Like I, I want the children to have fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I love, uh, we'll have photographs, of course, examples of your work in the blog post below or above. I don't know where I'm going to post it, but, uh, it's, it's remarkable what you've done. Uh, in too. such a short amount of time, and I'm really excited to see where this is going to go because I excuse think, me, yeah, oh, I think I it's <laughs> I think it's going to go. Welching is okay on the show. I don't. <laughs> uh, you, it's amazing where where it can go because I mean you're right. It it could go uh, nationwide. It could go uh, to a point where you know you are on these shows, whatever. But those things are all sort of. You know, you know, the most important thing is that I still bonuses. try to maintain some balance yeah. because, you know, yeah. I do have two children and I have a husband and a good marriage and I want to make sure that I stay focused on all of that. But, you know, it's, and I have some work. I have clients. My summer has been incredibly slow for work this year. Um, I found that a lot of my peers have had a hard time booking this year. And I, instead of freaking out about it, I just said, well, oh, maybe this summer I'm supposed to just take a minute and like be with my kids. My older one is, um, like I said, he's on the spectrum. We're trying to get him a service dog. He is really involved in baseball. He's doing a television show for Nessun. I need to be able to drive him places. My little one, you know, I want to spend some time with him. And I was like, I'll just kind of trust what's going to happen. And then this happened. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm fucking out of my mind. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> sure. Do I know what I'm doing? No. Do I know what I'm doing? Yes. I have, I mean, like, I know where I want to go with it. I have some really great ideas. People are making all kinds of suggestions. Yeah. Listen I'm not. To, yeah. Listen to your own gut. Yeah. I, know, no. I think, I, I think it's served you well all these years, certainly from, from your experiences in, you know, in Philly and in mm. Boston and then LA and LA and then back in Boston, you've, you've, you've managed to really find your groove in a way and i think it's fantastic uh so again as i said in the, the beginning of the show uh, I, I i'm even talk with folks who are inspiring and will hopefully will get other people listening to the show or watching the show to say what can i do in my community mm -hmm. what can i do right here without having to think like oh my god the whole the, the sky's fallen mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna go broke you yeah you may that may happen <laughs> but you can find things to do you know, with yeah. everything that's going on right now, without getting political, I, I feel like I still have faith in people. Mm -hmm. And I always, it's so cliche to be like, the good guys usually win. It's like, love does trump hate. No, uh, no, not, and that's not a political, I don't mean it like that. Like, you know, love does conquer all and love always wins and you have to have faith and you have, and I'm not even a super religious person. I mean, I always joke, I'm the Jew that gets the tree, but I identify with so many cultures and I feel like there's a little bit of everybody and everybody and not to be cheesy, but I think this project has kind of reinforced that feeling for me because it's so easy to lose hope and faith. And, um, you know, I don't, I feel like timing, like I said, timing is everything and this will unfold as it needs to unfold. And when it's done, it'll be done and it'll be done for a reason. I mean, some people have asked me what your goal is. Like if you could photograph any child right now, who would it be for this project? And I was like, oh yeah, I didn't even hesitate. Sasha and Malia, that's who I want. Yeah. They're yeah. beautiful and amazing and they have an incredibly rich heritage and that should be told. And, you know, what's really nice is anybody can be a part of it because their children's identity is kept quiet. So celebrities could have their children's photographed if they want it, if their children photographed if they want it, because nobody knows who they are. It's more about, you know, there's no fee for the, the shoot. Um, I'm selling prints to make the money. The Every gallery is listed by date. I'm keeping it as simple as possible. Sure. You buy the print. Basically, the money's going to pay my assistant, who is my neighbor around the corner, who's helping me awesome. as much as she can, and for okay. childcare, sure. you know, sure. for now. 
Absolutely. So that's that's great. what I had to say about that. Sorry, I just went on a tangent. No but. worries at all. Uh, Kristen, thank you so much for oh, joining me today. Uh, you know, this is uh, really an amazing, amazing project. And I, I, I can't wait to share this uh, chat with the world and, of course, the photographs as well. And, and the link to your, yes, your, your it's, site. I it's hope. just a Facebook page right now. Okay. For that project. And I'm Instagramming it and tweeting it on my regular photography pages. Okay. Because I still want to be known as the photographer that does that. So I think, I don't, I mean, eventually maybe a website, but I don't have time to do that fast. So Facebook is fast. It, it reaches the world. It's enough. Twitter reaches the world. Um, I am going to be doing my first shoot on the road in Philadelphia on August 5th. I will announce where that is. I'm talking to somebody who has been generous enough, a company that's been generous enough to offer some space. The sessions take, the actual photography takes 30 seconds to a minute. That's it. You can't, children have an attention span of a flea. Yes. So you need to, and it helps if the parent's not in the room because when a parent is in the room, a child acts very differently. Yes. Um, I really encourage families of adopt, you know, there's a sibling set on the last session I did and there's an adopted child there, you know, and it will say sibling of such and such, but I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it to sibling and gender neutral because there are children who are transgendered that should be included. So it's just sibling to keep it not confusing to children. Um, and then they just have to sign a release form and that's pretty much it. They awesome. write on a whiteboard. This is my name. This is my heritage. So I think. You know, and then I just post it on the Facebook page and retweet it. That's it. It's less is more. Awesome. So I'll ha I'll so, have I'll have links to all of that in, okay. the, in the post as well. Thank you again for joining us today. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I'm really honored to be here. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.